So today I'm going to be doing another cover chat. I'm sorry it's been a little while since the last one, but I have been busy with uni, so I will try and do some that will make up for the last two weeks that I've missed. So you might see a few cover chats coming up in the next few weeks. So the book that I'm going to be talking about today is by Peter V. Brett, and it is called the Warded Man in the US and it's called The Painted Man in the UK. And I read it last March in 2013 and I really enjoyed it and I literally went out and bought the next two books as quick as possible and I am in love with this series. I think it is amazing and I think it doesn't ever get enough recognition. It's about this world where demons come out of the ground at night and they kind of eat humans and they're just horrible creatures demony creatures that are not nice, not friendly and just very very evil and nasty to the core and they come out at night out of the ground and they start feasting on people that they find and ripping people to shreds and there's all different types of demons some come from the ground, some come from water, some come from wood there's loads of different types and they can only be stopped by wards. Wards are like these little symbols that, that the humans can write on their doors and on their fence posts and things like that to protect them and keep them out. However, the humans do know that years and years ago that they had attacking wards that they could attack back with and that they could defeat the demons with. They've lost that knowledge now and they have only defensive wards. So this story is all about a guy called Arlen who is essentially a little farm boy, a very typical fantasy character, but he is very, very fun and he grows into something absolutely wonderful. And the story is just so good. And if you have not read this book and this series, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. So go and do it. <laughs> I rated it five stars out of five. I loved it and I would definitely recommend it to all of you. So the Warded Man paperback edition was published in 2010 by Random House and has 453 pages. The US cover is very very similar to the UK cover but obviously it's called The Warded Man so I wanted to talk about them separately even though they're very very similar. This one is a kind of orange tone. It's got this kind of like a monk figure on the very centre. I really like this kind of hooded figure because you can't actually see his eyes and I think that that is really really cool. He's all in shadow, you can't really tell who he is and there's not much of a body form going on either because it's quite loosely wrapped around him so that's really cool. It kind of attracts your attention but doesn't really give anything away about the character so that's nice. Then we have the central text, The Warded Man. I do like the text, I think it's very balanced, I think it works fairly well because it's a light colour and the background and the colours used for the overall cover are very colourful and bright but very light in their tone so the white kind of works well enough with that. I do prefer the gold lettering that's at the bottom for Peter V. Brett. I think that's much more interesting and it fits a lot better with the design but it still works. It's a good cover overall. It's definitely an attractive cover. I bought my version because it was kind of similar to this and it attracted me to it so yeah, I definitely do like this cover, I think it's decent. So, would I buy this cover? Yes, it's almost exactly the same as the UK cover, which I really liked and I did buy, so I would definitely buy this. I think it's very pretty. I think it's very balanced as well, which is a really nice thing to see on a cover. And I think that although the type is not original, it's definitely good in the fact that it's just balanced and harmonious. And that's If you don't want to design your own typeface, that's fine, but just get one that looks good on the cover. Please, 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 please. So they have done that well and I like that. Next we have the Warded Man, the US first edition hardback. And this was published in 2009 by Random House with 416 pages. This one I don't really like the cover of. I think that it could have been a lot better. I do like the dark blue that they've used for the background and I like the fact that you can see the ward right in the middle, the white ward. It looks really cool and really interesting. It kind of very vibrant glow around it which I really like. It gives it a magical feeling. I do like that you can then see the sort of shadows of wards on either side of that in darker blue. That's really nice. I think that's very effective. The thing that I don't like is that kind of orange strip at the top. I don't understand why that's been put in there, although I do get that it's kind of fantasy and they wanted to portray that. 
There's no sort of big floating castle in the book, so why is there got to be one on the cover? It doesn't make any sense. And there's this beautiful sunset, which is really, really stunning and completely unnecessary. Like, why does it need to be there? It doesn't. That whole strip could be taken away, in my opinion, and it could just have been a blue background with warded man on the front. And that would have made it so much more sleek. I think that would have been much more stylish and much more interesting to look at as a composition. This one kind of just looks a little bit cluttered. The text is very balanced and the fact that the W and the M are larger, I do like that. I think that's very nice. But again, like I said, I just don't think that that orange strip at the top works. It just kind of stands out straight away at you because it clashes with the blue and it's not a good clash, it's just a kind of, ah, oh, why are you drawing my eye to that little bit of horror in the top? So I don't really like that, but other than that, it's a decent cover, so I probably will pick this one up just for the fact that there's that on the front cover and it doesn't look like it describes the story well enough to me, it doesn't intrigue me enough and it doesn't make me really want to pick it up and read it. It's an okay cover, if you like that sort of thing. Next we have the UK version of the Painted Man cover, which was published in 2009 by Voyager, and this one has 544 pages. Now, I really like this cover because, as I said, it's very similar to the American cover, but this one is more red in the tone. I also love the fact that they've created their own typeface for the Peter B. Brett. I think that that is a really, really lovely typeface, and that is really kind of one of the major reasons that I was attracted to this cover in the first place was because of the typeface, because it has actually been thought about, considered, and it was just very interesting and very cool to look at. And it's very balanced, it doesn't have anything that's out of place, it just looks very very cool. Kind of like shredded paper around the edges as well, which is a really nice effect. And then there's the Painted Man in a smaller font at the bottom. I like that because it doesn't detract, even though it is white and I don't really like white type on coloured backgrounds. The fact that it's smaller than the rest of the type, I think that's a really nice thing because it draws you into it rather than just blaring it straight in your face like a lot of covers do. So I think that's a really cool effect. I also just love the hooded figure once again. I think that the shadows are really lovely and the vibrant clouds behind are just very effective as well. And I really like the little strap line that says, enter a world where darkness belongs to demons. I think that's so effective because that is completely summing up the whole story in one little phrase and definitely attracts you into it. I think that's a very, very cool way of doing things. And I would definitely say that this cover is one of my favorites of this book. So I'm happy that I have it, and I definitely would buy it, of course. So next we have the Serbian cover, which was published in 2011 by Laguana and contains 480 pages. So this cover is quite interesting. It seems like a lot of the international covers do include a kind of hooded shadow figure, which I really do like because that's what really attracted me to it. And I do actually quite like this cover. I think it's very effective. I think that the shadows of the sort of trees in the background beautiful, very spooky, very interesting, draws you in, makes you want to know what it's about. That's so good. Then we've got the figure on the front who's very shadowed again, kind of just very dark and kind of dreary and spooky and interesting, but it doesn't look like some horror story. It looks like it's some interesting, spooky fantasy, which it kind of is, so I think that's a good thing. Then we've got this kind of glow behind the trees, that's very effective, that's beautiful as well. It gives this shimmer to the whole thing, it kind of adds a magical feeling. I love the greenish tinge to it, I think it's beautiful, I think the whole colour scheme for this cover seems to work really, really well. I like the fact that we can see these kind of bramble silhouettes, I like that. I think it's just really interesting and it's definitely focused more on the, the wood demon elements, I think that's a really cool effect and I just really enjoy the cover that looks like this because the top corner as well is really lovely. It's got a midnight kind of tinge to it and then these sparkles in the sky, very effective and very beautiful. The cover itself is really lovely. The text I don't actually mind because there are hints of white on the cover in the stars, so the white, very bold again, but not terribly distracting and horrible. It's okay, it works alright. It's a very balanced typeface, which is a good thing. It's got a ward in the centre of the O. I always like it when they do things with O's. I think that's very effective. And I like that. It definitely attracts you into the story more. The Peter V. Brad, the top, is kind of a chromish colour, which is really nice. It looks very interesting and brassy and just very effective. 
kind of blends in very nicely. I would have preferred if all of the type had been like that, I think, but it's still a very, very nice cover, and I think that it's very, very well considered, and the whole thing works very well. So would I buy this? Yes, I would. I think it's very, very beautiful and very attractive to look at and draw you in. And I really, really like the kind of creepy figure that's coming in from the right-hand side. I think that that is very interesting and definitely relates to the story. Next we have the Portuguese cover, which is published in 2009 by Guia Livro and has 606 pages. The woods that are all over the body, that's interesting. I like that, I think that's very effective. It's just very interesting how they've done that. I like the effect that it creates, and it definitely it draws you into the story and makes you wonder why has he got all these markings on his body? What are they relating to? So that's a really cool effect that they've given. The fact that he's got this kind of shield at the bottom, a little bit abstract, I wouldn't have included it, but I suppose it's to hide the bum. That makes sense, but it's a bit weird, it's a bit random, I'm not sure I would have put it in there, I probably just would have cropped it higher up. Then there's all these kind of spears and this big fire, it's very dramatic, very kind of in your face, like, oh my goodness, there's this man and he's going into these gates and he's going to attack a fire. It's a little bit all chaotic and mad, but in a kind of alright way with me actually, like, I do like it, I think it's interesting, I think it's definitely draws you in, definitely makes you want to find out what the action is and why he's kind of heading into this fiery pit and you don't really know much about it and then there's these trees and this massive cloudy sky and it's all kind of brushed over with this metallic-y greenish tinge which is a really cool effect. I do like it, I think it's interesting, I think that the text has been well considered for this one. I think that the title text definitely kind of relates to the runes all over his skin and the wards. They're really cool, very effective, and I think that it's very balanced and sketchy, but also very balanced and harmonious, which I like. I think it just works very, very well. The fact that it's black, not white, it, it blends into the cover. It's really interesting. So the first thing you see is the figure. It's not the cover with its title blaring into your face. It's the figure, it's the action, it's what's going on. Why is this happening? I want to know more. And that's a good thing to have. On the whole, I think this cover is a little bit too chaotic for my liking, but I think it definitely has been well considered and I think it does definitely relate to the story. So for those reasons, I may or may not pick it up. If I read the blurb, I definitely would. I think it's interesting. I think it's a definite different twist on how to imagine things. And I like the fact that the figure is turned away from us, but would I buy it? It's a little bit, I don't know, maybe. So next we have the mass market paperback French edition which was published in 2011 by Milady and this one has 672 pages. Again this one is very very similar to the Portuguese, it's got a figure and he's got runes all over him which is very cool. I like that, I think as I've said before the shadowy face and the turn away body is very very cool. The text on this one I do actually really like because it's in a yellowish tinge and I think that's very very effective and it's got this kind of outline around it which is very cool, draws you into it. It's very rounded text as well, it's not long, it's not elongated like a lot of text is, it's very rounded and I like that, I think that's very different and that's very quirky. So that draws you into that. Then there's this kind of rune shape of the circles and all these different symbols which is really cool, very very linked in with the story. The Peter V. Brett is in a very simple, easy type. Then we've got the starlight going on behind and the moon which is really cool, shining away from the background. The staff is very interesting, very exciting, I like that, it links again to the story. And this billowing cloak of stuff, I like that as well. I think this cover is very interesting and very cool, and the green and just everything works very well. I think it's been well considered, very nicely designed, very well thought out, and the whole thing just seems to work in its own way, which is a really, really nice thing to see and to enjoy. Would I buy this book? I probably would, because I think it's really kind of witchy and creepy and fantasy all at the same time, which is a good thing in my mind. <laughs> Next we have the Italian paperback, which was published in 2011 by Newton Compton, and this one has 474 pages. I am intrigued by this one. Again, it's got a kind of hooded figure, but this one has a face on, and we can kind of see the eyes from this figure, and there's this hand which is kind of reaching out for us. 
very creepy but very interesting at the same time. It's definitely more dynamic than a lot of the others because we see this movement it kind of adds that feeling of actually exhilaration that we're kind of part of the story. Then there's this kind of sword or staff that he's holding, I'm not really sure what that is. It's very mysterious, that's the word I'm looking for. This one again has a kind of silhouette of this castle in the background. I don't know why they feel the need to include these silhouettes of castles. There really aren't these big castles in this story, so why do we need them included on the cover? We don't. The sandy tones of the background are very nice because that definitely does link in with the story and does link in with the whole plot line that goes on and I like that, I think that's very effective. I like that the most of this cover is in shadow and the text, again, not that bad. It has been thought about, it has got interesting qualities like the M that is arched like this and the N which is a very flat top. I like those qualities, I think they're very interesting and they definitely give a whole new feeling to the typography and make it more kind of fantasy. I think that they are very fantasy, very kind of reminiscent of the runes and stuff from The Hobbit which is cool and I just like this cover even though it's weird. <laughs> It's a weird one, but I like it. I don't know if that makes sense. Just for the fact that it's shadowy and dark and creepy, and again, it draws you in, and the action of this one, I like that. Would I buy it? I probably would. I think it would be a really interesting collection of books to have the whole series in things like this, in different colours and different tints. I would like that. I think that it would look very, very cool on your bookshelf. So, yeah, I probably would buy this book if I thought that it was sounded like a good story and obviously I know that the story is good. <laughs> Next we have the German paperback which is published by Hain. It has 797 pages and this one has taken quite a different tone. It's a lot lighter than a lot of the other covers. Most of them have been in shadow. This one is very bright, very vibrant, but it also kind of looks like there's a big storm about to happen and hit the earth, which is really cool. I like that. This one also has a much more illustrative style. Most of the others have been photography based. This one has very much got an illustrative, cartoony kind of style to it. I love the little figure in the corner. I think it's so interesting and draws your attention straight down to that little bit of image. Very effective. Again, the staff is really, really cool. I like that. And I think that the whole shadowiness of it is so, so interesting to look at. I really do like this cover. I think that the background could have used a little bit more detail, even though they wanted it to clearly be very plain. I think that the background having a little bit more detail about sort of the demons and things would have been nice. However, I do like the kind of rustic effect that they've got going on, the kind of weathered effect at the top, where you can see kind of the little bit of wear and tear on the cover and the red text seems to actually work very well. It's the sort of thing I wouldn't have put together, white and red, but actually it does work very well because it's a very muted red. Then we have this kind of floral, circular, oval background which is kind of framing the type for the actual title. I don't like that, I think that is completely unnecessary. Although it would have been nice to see it framed, I don't think these floral things really work because I'm not really sure what they're in reference to and they kind of look like little bits of stone or I'm not sure what they're meant to be but it doesn't work for me personally. However, the typography itself is definitely interesting. I love the weathered effect. I think that it looks really cool with the kind of ink blots that have dotted around it and the fact that it looks as if it's been printed onto the page as opposed to just computer generated definitely gives it a more hand done, hand illustrated and beautifully rendered image and type together and the whole thing works very well except for that oval so I do like this cover, I think it's very effective and I do like that it's very light and interesting as opposed to the others which are mostly in shadow, this one is mostly light but it still has the same effect, it draws you in and it makes you want to know more about that little figure in the corner. So would I buy this? I probably would if it didn't have that oval on it. Next we have the French paperback which is published in 2009 with 432 pages by Bragalone and this one I really don't get to be honest, I don't understand this one at all. So we have this figure on this platform that's tilted sideways as if it's about to fall over, it's very action packed, it's very dynamic. The figure is crouching as if to defeat this massive evil creature that is looming over him, towering over him with these fiery jaws 
and it's very, very vibrant, very action-packed, very colourful as well, but mostly in green. I do like the demon. I think that the demon is very effective. I think the demon definitely does resemble the descriptions of the demons inside the story, and I think that it's very vibrant and cool to see the demon on the cover. However, I really don't like the little figure there. I don't like the fact that he's kind of doing this. I think that that's very obnoxious, and the main character in the story is not at all like that. He's very calm and kind of very shy at the beginning as well, so that doesn't really resemble him at all. I just feel like this one has too much going on by far, and it just doesn't work. It looks more like it's a kind of underwater sea Atlantis feeling, and it's just been poorly designed in my mind. I don't think it's very good. Again, we've got the white strip of text at the top that doesn't really fit in with the design, and then we've got this greenish tinge text at the bottom, which does fit in with the design more, but so much so that you can't really tell it's there until you look quite hard, so I would have probably done that in a more yellowish tone and made it stand out a bit more than it does actually stand out there. It doesn't seem to work with one of the types being very, very bright and one of them just blending in. It's just a bit weird. <laughs> So, would I buy this cover? No, I wouldn't. It just looks crazy. It looks like some blend of Atlantis and Arthur and I don't even know what else, but it's just a bit crazy. It just doesn't look right. It looks very weird and it doesn't seem to fit the story. Next we have the Bulgarian cover, which was published by Calibri in 2012 and has 472 pages. I do actually like this cover, even though it's quite a blend of lots of different elements. Once again we've got the typeface that was used on the UK cover for Peter V. Brett's name. I love that typeface, I think it's really cool, so I'm very happy that they have used it in the other countries as well. Then there's this typeface that is white for the main title. I think that, that does actually work on this cover because there are white runes all along the side. Behind the figure is this bluish background that's all blurred with red bloodish runes. These wards look like blood, they look like they've been cut out with blood and that's really cool, so interesting, so effective. Why haven't other things done this? But this blurring really makes it for me because I think the fact that the figure is so in focus and the background is so not in focus just gives it that contrast that really kind of offsets in your head and goes, ooh, that's quite interesting, I like that. Then we've got the figure who is obviously the centre point of the whole thing. He is staring straight into your eyes. Really cool, very effective, very stern face, no expression, but it just focuses you straight onto him and makes you think, why is he here? What's he doing? Why is he just standing holding this sword, this dagger? That's so cool, and the shadow, and the fact that he doesn't seem to have much of a body, it's just all in shadow below his neck. Very cool, very effective. Then you can see these slight runes on his cheeks and on his face, on the shadows, and I love this cover. I think it's very, very cool, and I would definitely buy this if it was a UK edition, because I think it's so interesting, and all the different elements have been so well balanced and thought out, which is a nice thing to see. The only thing I don't quite like is that there are so many runes along the bottom and the sides. I probably would have done one and then taken out one and then done another, so that there was more of a gap between them. But other than that, I think it is a very nice cover, very interesting and definitely different to a lot of the other covers in the colour combinations and the way that it's laid out. So that's a really interesting, cool thing to see and I would buy this one. Finally, we have the Estonian cover which was published in 2010 by Varak and has 518 pages. This cover, again, quite different to a lot of the others. This whole series of covers seems to all be kind of sharing similar themes but all quite different. I think this one is one of the weirder ones, and I think that this one gives a much more sci-fi feeling than a fantasy feeling. I get the feeling, looking at this cover, that this alien creature has come down to take this person from Earth. That's what it gives me as a vibe, and I don't think that that fits with the story, because that doesn't happen at all. So what we've got is a figure facing away, sitting down. I do like the figure, I like his pose, and I like the fact that he's kind of hunched over a little bit. I think that's really cool, and I think that that definitely draws you into the story. Again, he's got kind of scratches or runes on his back. The thing that gets me is the colour scheme. The colour scheme and this big giant creature that's looming over. I think it just looks like some armoured bug has grown to an extortionate size. Just, it looks weird. It looks creepy. It looks like an alien has invaded. It doesn't look like some demons coming up from the earth. It looks like an alien has 
fallen out of the sky and wants to abduct this man. The fact that it's got this sort of purplish smoke around it, it looks very, very sci-fi, like I keep saying, as if a UFO is landing. Red and black can work really well together, but just the smokiness and the blurriness that they've used here gives the effect that it's sci-fi. And again, the fact that they've got this shimmering, blaring red light coming out from behind the text, Again, I think that that gives a UFO, bright lights coming down to earth, feeling not a really cool high class fantasy, which is what it is. So I don't think that this cover works for the story at all. I think it would be an okay cover for a sci-fi story, but it definitely doesn't seem to fit with the story that I read, unless they've published a completely different book in Estonia, I don't know. But it's okay as a cover. It just doesn't fit for this story, so I wouldn't buy this one. I think it's a bit too sci-fi and a bit abstract in the design elements and the whole way that it's been combined, so I don't really like this one, but never mind. <laughs> so on the whole, there are a couple that I do like, a couple that I don't. I definitely want to know what you guys think, and if you haven't read this story or this series, please, 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 it's one of my all-time favourite books and series, and I would definitely say that if you've not read this you really need to if you like fantasy. It is an amazingly written and amazingly action-packed and just so fun world to live in and well not to live in it would be a bad world to live in but it would be so fun if you guys told me you were reading it because I love this story and this series and I don't think it gets anywhere near enough recognition that it deserves so please 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 do go away and read it and enjoy it and let me know what you thought of it. It's such a good book and I would love to know which covers you liked and which you didn't, so definitely leave me loads of comments down below and I will chat to you guys in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all very soon for another cover chat video. Bye!